Mike Bledsoe here with Technique Wad. Today we're going to go over Fran. We typically go over uh, one single movement, but we decided to do a popular benchmark wad because we podcast with Max L. Hodge on our last episode and we broke Fran down. So if you want to learn more about exactly uh, where your limiter might be, uh, go listen to that podcast, all right? Barbellshrug.com. Uh, so, Fran, if you don't already know, is 21 reps of thrusters and pull-ups, 15 reps of thrusters and pull-ups, nine reps of thrusters and pull-ups as fast as you can. For men, the thrusters are loaded at 95 pounds. For the ladies, 65 pounds. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about expectations. Uh, the most elite level men are in the low two minutes on Fran, so they finish it in you know, 215. I've seen, uh, I think someone may have broken two minutes, uh, maybe 150 something, that's ridiculous. Um, those guys are doing butterfly. Uh, that's for the men. Um, for the ladies, I, I'm actually not even sure what the most elite times are for women. So now I feel bad. Uh, sorry about that, ladies. You have to go look it up. Uh, then um, a lot of those guys are doing butterfly pull-ups, which we're going to cover a little bit. Uh, if you're doing regular kipping pull-ups, a good time is going to be around a three-minute range. All right, if you're doing them unbroken. Uh, all right, so. Uh, if, you're, if you break 10 minutes, if this workout takes you longer than 10 minutes, you need to scale the, the movement. So you need to either go lighter on your thrusters or you need to scale your pull-up somehow. We're going to go into that uh, towards the end of the video. All right. So first thing I want you guys to do is we're going to master the thruster. So I have my, my trusty companion, David here. He coaches here at Faction and uh, he's probably answering some emails on barbellshrug.com. For you. But uh, we're going to go over the thruster real quick, and I'm first going to talk about mobility because first off, not only is mobility going to keep you from doing the movement properly and finishing it and making it easy, but it's also uh, going to put you at risk for injury, all right? So the first thing we're going to address is mobility. So go ahead and pick up the bar, David, and <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the squat, all right? Because when you do a thruster, you're going down in a front squat, all right? So if you lack mobility in your ankles, what you may see is someone's heels coming off the ground. So if you're watching someone do uh, thrusters and their heels come off the ground, you want to shift forward a little bit, or maybe not. He's like, I don't want to do this and hurt myself. So if you're seeing this, especially at the bottom of the thruster, you know that somebody has, this is more than likely they have an ankle mobility restriction and they need to work on ankle mobility. The thing that they can do best for their Fran time is improve their ankle mobility. All right? Second thing is going to be the hips. If they're not able to get their knees nice and wide, this is not as common as say ankles, but if they can't get their knees wide, it may be A, uh, because of their ankle mobility, or B, because of their hips, okay? So they may need to do some hip external rotation exercises, all right? <clears throat> and then the last thing uh, we're gonna look at is shoulders. So we got ankles, hips, and now we have shoulders. David's gonna go overhead. Now, Right here you can tell he has really good shoulder flexion. Uh, what I'm talking about when I say shoulder flexion is the ability of the shoulder to come back. Now if someone doesn't have this, they may, their shoulders may come here and they may end here and they're not able to get in a nice uh, straight up and down position. Or what you'll see is they're not able to completely lock out, their elbows will be bent. So they'll be here and you'll say, hey lock out and they'll go, I can't do it. And then I've seen some coaches go, well you're full of it. You can do it, you're just not pressing hard enough. Well, if they press any harder, they're gonna start compensating at their back and then they're gonna hurt their back. So uh, the risk of injury here especially is either at the shoulders or at your back uh, if you don't have a requisite amount of shoulder mobility. And uh, again, uh, <clears throat> if you can't get all the way to the top, it's obviously gonna be a lot harder to do the movement, right? All right, so uh, we're gonna move now. Now we've uh, covered the mobility portion. It's just doing a big, a big mistake I see with a thruster is not going in the rack position. So David, go, he went straight to the rack position. He went from overhead, and the bar went straight to his shoulders. So this looks really good, okay? So what happens a lot of the time is people don't go to the rack position. They just hold it right there. Now, there's two mistakes you can make. You can either do this, and then you can try to correct it by going to your shoulders and too late, and that's still going to hurt you. Or I see a lot of people, they do the entire thruster without racking the weight. So watch David do one of these like this. It doesn't look very pretty, is it? And if, his, and if his elbow happens to smash into his knee, well, 
he might be able to say goodbye to those wrists, all right? Especially if he's loaded up with a good amount of weight, all right? So, most important thing here is the rack position on the squat. All right, let's go all the way to the bottom. He's also gonna stay nice and upright. So a lot of people fold over. They either lack strength or we go back to mobility. If they start folding over here at the bottom, it's gonna get really tough to breathe, all right? So try and keep, stay straight up down. David, can you uh, fold over for me real quick? All right, if you look like this, no bueno, all right? You either need to work on that thoracic extension. That's that right there. Or there might be something going on down line, ankles, hips, all right? So go ahead and stand up. <clears throat> the biggest limiter uh, outside of mobility and proper technique on your thruster is normally gonna be your front squat strength. So if you have good technique and mobility, front squat strength is gonna give you the most bang for your buck. Uh, the last thing we're gonna go over on the thruster is the push press. Uh, sometimes people can have Outside of mobility, they may not be very strong. Um, I see this with, uh, more commonly with women. They may be able to pop those hips, bar gets about their forehead, and then they just can't seem to lock it out at the top. That seems to be the hardest part. If that's the case, uh, you can do some things that help you help your pressing strength. We talk a little bit about that in the podcast with Max, all right? So, David, go ahead and give me like three really good strong thrusters just so people can see a good example. Boom. And notice as he passes, as he passes parallel on the way up, that's when his hips really pick up speed and he's popping that bar off his shoulders, okay? It's not a front squat with a press. He is, it's more like a front squat with a push press. Really drive hard. So go ahead and, yeah, really emphasize that hip drive. You can come up, pop. Show what a bad one would be like. What, would, what shows a bad one, David? Separating. There you go. That's definitely not a good one. <laughs> good. All right, so you can see the difference there. You can make it easier on your shoulders and your pressing by having nice hip speed. And a lot of times you're doing weight where you're nowhere, there's no way you're gonna be able to press that many times, okay? <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and put the bar down. We're gonna move on to pull-ups. First thing we're gonna address with this movement again, and with any movement you ever do, is gonna be your mobility, all right? Again, if you can't get that shoulder flexion we were talking about when you're going overhead with that, you probably don't belong doing kipping pull-ups on a hanging from a bar, okay? That's a really great way to mess up your shoulder. Um, so first thing, if you have a hard time getting the barbell overhead, then don't do kipping pull-ups. Maybe some dead hang pull-ups or ring rows are gonna be more in order. We have a technique wad just on pull-ups where you're gonna, we go over some of the scaling movements there and you can see examples of things like ring rows. Um, so if you, don't, if you don't have the mobility, I wouldn't do kipping pull-ups, all right? Now, if you don't have the strength to do a few dead hang pull-ups, I'd, I'd say three to five dead hang pull-ups, then you probably don't want to be knocking out 45 kipping pull-ups as fast as you can either, okay? So really get that, that requisite amount of, of pulling strength before you go throwing yourself around a bar, okay? <clears throat> now, with the kipping, the, the mobility we're looking for specifically is the same as when we were doing the thrusters. When David got to the top of the thruster, and say he couldn't straighten his elbows, or if he did straighten his elbows, he compensated at the back. Um, if you can't do that with a barbell, you don't belong kipping on a bar from overhead, okay? So fix that first. Now, if you do have that amount of mobility, and you do have that amount of strength, uh, we're gonna just show you what kipping looks like. So David, go ahead and knock out some kipping pull-ups. So when you're doing these, it's, it's really important to keep the core tight. Uh, He's not going to get his legs all flailing around. His feet are going to stay nice and close together. And he's staying nice and controlled. When he gets to the top, he's pushing away from that bar and then getting back into the kipping motion. All right, let me take a break. More um, details on the yeah, more, more details on the technique wad on, for pull-ups. Now, uh, if you can do 21 pull-ups in a row kipping, uh, or you can, and or you can do Fran 21, 15, 9 unbroken. That means you can just, every time you get the pull-ups, if you can do your pull-ups unbroken every time, um, then you might be ready to do the butterfly, all right? So butterfly pull-ups, um, if you're not strong enough to do them, can be hard on your shoulders, uh, and I wouldn't do them every workout. There's definitely workouts where you want to do kipping, and then other workouts where you're practicing to go fast as butterfly. This is where you're really going to separate uh, you know, making your friend time go from three minutes to like 2.15, all right? 
So, uh, David, you want to go ahead and knock out a few uh, butterflies? Again, you can view more of these and a little bit of the explanation of how they work on the other technique wad for pull-up specifically. Staying nice and tight here with his feet, driving with his hips. All right. Thanks, David. So, uh, last important thing is going to be transition. You don't want to, the obvious thing is you don't want to set your barbell up 100 yards from your pull-ups, right? And when you set down your bar, you might want to maybe maintain a little bit of control and don't let it scoot halfway across the ground, all right? You don't want to ghost ride that barbell too much. Um, as far as scaling goes, uh, if you're not breaking, t like if, if it's taking you longer than 10 minutes to do Fran, then you're a prime candidate for scaling, all right? So it, it may be the thrusters, it may be the pull-ups, it might be both, uh, it might just be your wind. Uh, it's supposed to be a nice, short, intense workout. So a few ways to scale is just go lighter on the thrusters, all right? That's gonna be your, your main scale for that. Uh, the other, the scale for the pull-ups are gonna be ring rows, banded pull-ups, jumping pull-ups, uh, any way you can make the pull-up easier. Now, once you start breaking 10 minutes with a scaled version, then you might wanna move to that. As far as shoulder health goes, I am a huge fan of doing the ring row over any scaling of push of pull-ups because most people need to get more horizontal pulling and if you have a hard time getting overhead, the horizontal pulling is gonna be a lot better for your shoulders, okay? We have a technique wad for that too. We do have a technique wad for that. All right, I don't think you may have heard CTP in the background reminding me that we have a technique wad on ring rows. Horizontal pulling. Horizontal pulling. And ring rows. And ring, ring rows should probably be in there. We have several ones. All right, guys, uh, if you have any questions about uh, Fran, you can go to barbellshrug.com, click on ask a question, and if there's something I didn't cover, go ahead and hit me up there and let me know.